Mira, I was worried. How was it? Cersei has a way of looking at you as though you're nothing. It's more than a little intimidating. It didn't go very well. I'm sorry. Cersei is known for being rather difficult. But at least it's over now. Lady Marjorie has spent the entire day working on seating arrangements for the wedding. Of course, you and I are seated way at the back. <laughs> here with the fourth cousins and the ninth born sons. Ah, Sir Jamie. I wouldn't mind tar mine tarnishing that white cloak of his. Sarah? <laughs> what? It's true. And Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper. I'm told he has a paramour. He is quite handsome. And quite <laughs> from what I've heard. Perhaps Lady Marjorie could make the right introductions. Who knows? We might meet our future husbands. Although, marrying a king, I can only imagine what that would be like. Would you marry Joffrey if it meant you'd become queen? He does have a certain look about him. And he's always treated Lady Marjorie well. I don't want to be queen no matter who I'd have to marry. Don't want to be queen? You northerners. You'd make a perfect scepter. This girl might be a spy. Well, I would marry him. Imagine the power you would have as queen of the Seven Kingdoms. I might even allow you to be my handmaiden. <laughs> Let's see, who else should we marry off? Brienne of Tarth and Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> what a perfect match! Sir Bronn and... What are you doing? Well? I'm sorry, my lady. As am I. We shouldn't have been messing about. This is not a game. It's a battle plan. Allies and enemies can be made with every move. Yet they say it is men who are powerful. See what I mean? The queen was pleased by your display, Mira. Was she though? I'm just she glad it's over. Rather she saw right through me for some reason. King's Landing can be exhausting sometimes. There's always someone to please or some perceived slight to smooth over. I fear it will only get worse when I am queen. Once they know your true heart, the lords and ladies will have no choice but to love you. Do you agree? It doesn't matter what you feel. It only matters what you say. You learn very quickly. Your words to Cersei were brave, but I know you must fear what the Boltons might do to your family. I do appreciate your willingness to appease her, as difficult as it may have been. Thank you, my lady. There's been something on my mind. Something important. Hmm. If only I knew what she's about to ask of her. Uh... I don't know. The thing is, we don't know any of the backstory here. We don't know how close she as a handmaiden is to Marjorie. From the way she's been talking to her, it's hard to gauge. I don't think we should ask for her help, especially because we already accepted Tyrion's help. I'm assuming here it's about uh, securing Ironwood uh, for House Forester. That's uh, the only thing that comes to mind. And I really don't trust Marjorie right now. Not as much as I trust Tyrion. Even though, in character, she shouldn't trust him either. Oh well. My mother wanted me to ask a favor of you. For my family. But as you said, you're in a delicate position now with the wedding so near. And I would never want to jeopardize that. Soon I will be queen. And maybe then I'll be in a better position to help you. But for now... Now we must both be cautious. Of course, my lady. You're right. 
Lass it away. If in doubt, appease the powerful. <laughs> is my uh, is my thinking here. Pretty much always. Okay, time for a little bit of a recap and a brief discussion on Marjorie. Um, during our meeting there with Tyrion, we uh, of course noticed his scar and that leads me to uh, think uh, we are experiencing a time jump here from the Red Wedding to the Battle of Blackwater. That's when Stannis Baratheon, one of the other contesters to the crown, uh, pretty much attacked King's Landing head first uh, and Tyrion with the help of the pyromancers and uh, at the last second Tywin Lannister riding in uh, managed to defeat him and uh, <laughs> barely uh, escape with his life so that's where he got the scar but that also means that Tyrion is no longer Hand of the King. Tywin is back in King's Landing and uh, has taken back uh, the reins. So he's now Master of Coins and uh, could offer us that deal. Okay, so in a, about Marjorie. Uh, she is of House uh, Tyrrell of Highgarden or Tyrell, whatever you want to pronounce it. Um, uh, High Garden is a little bit of a different story. During the time of Aegon the Conqueror, 300 years ago, High Garden was ruled by the gardeners who <laughs> tried to protect their land. However, they did not stand a chance against Aegon's dragons, as did n anybody else. <laughs> so um, they were completely eradicated, and when Aegon uh, united all the seven kingdoms into one uh, he instated the Tyrells into power so that kind of uh, opportunistic characteristic of the um, Tyrells is always prevailing and I think it's has kind of become their tradition they've always been very close to power one of the major houses of course but never quite there yet and Marjorie she tries with all her might to to actually get that for her people and that's that's very much uh, what her character is about she's very power hungry and uh, that's why I'm so cautious about her I think you might just see me as one more pawn on her chess field <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm very interested in what's going to happen next with that. Well, shit. Seven hours. Just what I said. Uh oh. Oh God. Let's play a little game, shall we? Did you know my ancestors wore the skins of their enemies as a coat? <gasps> uh, walk away. No, no, walk away. Not my best work, unfortunately. Just go, I man. I have fallen out of practice. Okay. But he didn't make it easy. What with all that bloody noise. <laughs> like a drowning cat. I'm not oh, gonna even move stop. a muscle. As my father likes to say, a naked man holds few secrets. But the flayed man, the flayed man holds none. Pity he didn't know your father was the warden of the north. He does now. How much further is it to these foresters? Uh, a day, my lord. Two at most. What was that? My lord? Shh! Listen. There. Go on. 
Hear that? Oh, shit. I know I heard something. I think you heard a horse. Turn around. Never mind. <laughs> We've wasted enough time already. Hope that was a smart choice. Yeah, that was Ramsey Snow. The cruelty of Ramsey Snow is what you see over there. Snow, is, by the way, is the uh, name you give to a bastard who is uh, who's born in the north. And similarly, there are other bastard names like... Um, what are the others? Rivers or sand and so on for every region of the continent. Oh dear. Bloody hell! Yeah. That guy went through hell. <laughs> Ethan, as I was saying, you are young, and there are those within these walls who are uncertain of your leadership. But 300 generations of Forester Lords stand behind you. Lord Gerhard the Tall, who founded our house, and your grandfather, Lord Thorin the Bold, who seized back the river valley from the White Hills. What do they call my father? Lord Gregor the Good. Uh, Ethan, shouldn't you know your father's title? <laughs> he was fair and wise, and courageous in battle. And what will they call me? That is for you to define as the new lord. These were your father's people to lead and protect, and now they're yours. But your father did not bear this responsibility alone. He and every forester lord before him chose one man whom they trusted above all others. The Lord Sentinel. Forester traditions demand that a new Lord Sentinel must be chosen. Keep walking, you cremant son of a whore. Move! <coughs> Summon the Lord! Hmm. We need his judgment. I've done nothing wrong! I was only trying to survive! Lord Ethan. Miss. Who is this man? This craven is a deserter and a thief. This house is doomed! We all fucking know it! Quiet, thief. Eric was supposed to be guarding our weapons, but instead we caught him stealing them. Two shields and three spears. You stole from us. I feared for my life. Yes, my lord. I fled. We should all flee. It's not stealing if you're taking what's yours by right. He speaks He's truth. Right. I've a family to feed. And not two coins to rub together since Lord Gregor left us to rot here. Where's our pay? Our share of bread and wine grows you're small You're not making a good case day. for yourself. Leave the poor man alone. Go. Lord Ethan. I know these words are hard, but they're honest. This house is falling. We'll never survive the coming winter. Most of us won't even live to see it. We are in this together. You say that, but it won't be you who's starving come winter. <clears throat> You'll address him as Lord. He just stopped that. Lord Ethan. You must decide the punishment. Lord Gregor always took a thief's fingers. Three of them. Now may not be the time for harsh punishment. The men are on edge as it the is. Men need to know they cannot do whatever the fuck they please. Their lord will not permit it. He's a thief. You can send him to the war. Him 
Giving him a choice. Fingers or the wall? I will decide. Send him to the wall. Take his fingers. He's a thief. If you punish me, you'll be punishing an innocent man. It will be an injustice, my lord. Please, my lord. My family depends on me. Uh, I won't show, show mercy, that's for sure. Can't do that. But a thief to the wall, I don't know. I sentence you to the wall, where you will join the Nuts Watch. No, oh, please, my lord! My family, without me, they'll die! <laughs> That was certainly unpleasant, but a lord must meet without punishment when it's due. Not just yourself, of course. You can weigh on any lord. Maester, what do you think? Me? Yes. Did I do what's right? The wall seems like a fitting place for a thief. I only hope he doesn't find Garrett there and take his anger out on the poor squire. Oops, I didn't consider that. You heard that. what the thief said. I expect this sort of thing will happen again. But a sentinel can help you in the face of disloyalty. You need someone you can trust by your side. Someone you can rely on, no matter the circumstance. Possessing wisdom and experience. Oh, shit. I wanted to choose him. You should have one advisor above the rest. There are two capable men for the role. They both want the job, but neither thinks very highly of the other. How do I decide between them? Talk to them. Solicit the opinion of people close to you. Here. The Bracer of the Sentinel. The Badge of Office. Tonight is your first small council meeting. It would be wise to bestow this Bracer upon your chosen Sentinel then, to show that you, show that you are decisive and in control of this house. Your Sentinel will wear this for all to see. I'll make the right choice as Sentinel. Come speak with me when you're ready to convene the small council, my lord. Hmm. Well, first of all, I have to address uh, the technical if issues here. I don't know if you've noticed, but sometimes, well, here it's okay, but around the, especially around the, uh, the heads of the characters, or like around edges or something like that, you'll see some jittery animation, which is a little bit ugly, but what really is starting to grind my gears are these fucking audio glitches. Now, when I say party, Man, get that sword out. whenever they, they say anything, it's like the <laughs> every second line is butchered by in the beginning they repeat a word or something and then in the end they cut off like at least a syllable and that really doesn't help with my immersion with the story. It's probably a problem with the mixing or the way they implemented the cutscenes or whatever. But they really gotta fix that. I'm expecting them to ho hopefully fix it by the second now. episode. <sighs> I like the game so come far, on, but this is really grinding say? my gears. Swords off! Slash right! Parry! Again! Again! See? Sword up! Swing left! Parry! Parry! Wrong! I didn't know so dogs could hold swords. Word. Of course, my lord. I have many decisions to make, and I wanted your advice. What's the state of our defenses? Are these men ready for what's coming? This lot, ready? No, 
but they will be. We post anyone who can hold a spear along the parapet, that way they won't get much scrutiny, and put our meanest, nastiest looking brutes front and center. That'll show Ramsey we're a force in our own right. Right. You've got to project power, especially when you're weakened. Thank you, Sir Royland. I'll let you get back to training these men. Thank you, my lord. And uh, I'll be sure to watch out for more deserters. After today, I suspect there'll be more to come. Bolton's raised Winterfell, Royland. How blind can you be? We we stand no chance against them, especially with backing from King's Landing. I don't think that's a good idea. And who's Malcolm? Did we meet that guy? I don't think so. Ethan. Or should I say Lord Ethan? Hello, Uncle Malcolm. Uncle. I saw what you did today. It's not an easy thing to do. Showing mercy to a man who admits his guilt. But if you'll excuse me, my lord. I should finish packing before nightfall. I hope to be off tomorrow. At first light. But where are you going? Your mother asked me to cross the narrow sea to find your brother, Asher. Asher? She has asked me to return with him, to help the house. He said nothing of this to me. Because she fears you will not agree. I told her my place is here, that I'll be of no help to you in Essos. But she insisted. I will hold, of course. Until you've spoken with her about this. Just try to be kind to her. She's been living a nightmare made real. But you know that just as well. She's my mother. Of course I'll be gentle. I know you will. You're good-hearted, my lord. That is your true strength. But my mother's fears are not the only ones I face. My people are scared as well. I'm told I must choose a sentinel. If I may be so bold, Sir Royland is the man for the job. He'd be a fine choice. And I'd trust him. Aye, Sir Royland is the man you want. Why Sir Royland? We are at war. You need a warrior by your side. Royland has the respect of his men and will bring strength and strength and discipline to this house. Duncan would offer sage advice, but now is not the time to negotiate. Not with the likes of Ramsay Snow. Thank you, Uncle. Ethan, I need to talk to you. I saw what you did to that man. I know you told me you'd have to change, but I suppose I hadn't believed you would. I can't afford any more mistakes. Everyone knows what happened with Lord Whitehill. Garrod being sent to the wall without my knowledge. I know. And that wasn't your fault. I'm the Lord. It's my responsibility. The people want me to lead. They need me to, but... What? Ethan, please. Tell me. What do you suggest I do? You must be strong. Decisive. You are the Lord of this house. Remember, you're just as capable as Asher or Roderick ever were. I know it. I only wish you did too. You have always given me good advice. Thank you. She's more like sending me signals here, actually. First she's upset that I exert justice, and then she wants me to be strong leader for the house. I mean, one or the other girl can't have everything. Duncan. Yes, my lord. I have much to consider and face a difficult decision. Perhaps I can help. Your father often sought my counsel. Okay. Uh, I do need to find out if he's the man for the job, so let's ask As him about lord, sentinels. I must name a sentinel. Of course. And if I may ask, who do you favor for the role? Perhaps I can share my insight. And talking can sometimes help you make a decision. I haven't decided yet. Well, you must soon, my lord. This is not a matter to be taken lightly. Thank you, Duncan. I appreciate what? your advice. 
I'm at your service, my lord. Okay, maybe. Ah, oh, shit. I actually wanted to ask him why he sent. Uh, Our provisions are rather low, my lord. Uh, get I made the count away. again, just to be sure. But it doesn't look good. How bad is it? How long could we hold the house? We couldn't withstand a siege, my lord. If the Boltons or the White Hills cut us off and wait us out, we'd only last a fortnight. But there are steps we can take. In the past, we've demanded food from the small folk to replenish our stores. We can do it again, if, you, if you'd like. We've done it before in desperate times. The last long winter, my family had to give all our pigs to the house. If that's what's necessary to keep the house safe, then we must. Aye, a hard choice. But it's what has to be done. I'll see to the arrangements, my lord. Okay, so it's been done already? Dude, <laughs> I just said if there's anything else. Well, I guess that was the only choice. <laughs> that was rather fast. Come on, you Ryan, what do you want to... Who who do you want to be said on? Keep at it and you won't have much left. Something to pick your teeth with. No, Ethan. Look at this. All good sores have a name. I call mine Two Brothers. I carved this to give me strength. And this, so I remember. Oh. I mean, I could never forget. But, oh, you know, don't you? And what of your brother Asher? Where's his name? There's only two sides to the blade. Besides, he left, so... Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someday, I'll pathetic. have a real one. But not like that one. Only a lord could have that sword. You'll have a good sword. I'm sure of it. I watched you today. I saw what you did to that man. Was he... Our enemy. A bad man. Everyone keeps talking about them. Enemies. Rules mean nothing if we don't enforce them. It doesn't matter if he's good or bad. You can't steal. That's a rule. Well, I say he was bad. Bad men killed Father and Roderick. They need someone to hurt them back. Even worse. I want a real sword. No one's afraid of wood. I'll find the men who took Roderick someday, and I'll make sure I have a real sword when I do. Uh, um, you stay here and keep carving, okay? <laughs> Please. Uh, okay. Swords up! You can lift them, yeah? So we've got the tower here. So you just get to see everything from above. Okay then. Okay, Ortengrin. What you looking at? <laughs> Nothing in particular, okay. Maester? Yes, Lord Ethan. I see you've spoken to a number of people. Are you prepared to name your sentinel? What is it you're doing over here? Admiring the ironwood, my lord. I studied it at the Citadel. The wood may be black, but I see gold. An entire forest of gold. What do you mean? It is our greatest asset, my lord. Why not give some of our ironwood to House Bolton and have them leave us be? We could ransom ourselves. You can hardly put a price on your own life, or the lives of those you love. How much do we have to give, Maester? From here to Wolfswood Creek, and then across the next two bridges, it should be enough to satisfy Ramsay Snow, I imagine. 
Bloodlust can often be sated by gifts and gold. He might be the best sentinel of them all. My lord, are you now ready to name your sentinel? Yes, Maester. I'm ready. Very well. I will convene the small council at once. Well, I will appoint Duncan. And I think the solution uh, suggested by Ortengrin might be the most reasonable approach. Of course, we'll see about all that.